Hey you guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And on today's topic, you guys, as you guys can see, we are going to be talking about when first meeting a narcissist. So I wanted to bring this to everyone's attention. Um, first of all, when you meet someone and you get a bad feeling, um, something in you, you have an, an, an intuition where something feels wrong, where the behaviors of, the, of this person that they're showing you, something, it just feels awkward. It feels as if this person is watching your every move. It feels as if this person kind of knows you. It, um, if they if you just feel like you know this person and you start feeling comfortable talking to them, but at the same time, in that same comfortable space that you're in, that wasn't your first train of thought or feeling. That was after this person made you feel comfortable. Then you said to yourself, okay, I'm in the safe zone. This person is okay. This person is cool. You know, I'm in the safe zone. Don't ever think that you're in a safe zone when you meet people that you feel are alike to you and your beliefs or the way you view things or your past experiences. As we all know, narcissists have been in some of the experiences, you know, some of the same experiences we've been in. And we know that we are different. We have different feelings, different ways of thinking. So when you meet someone, I know a lot of times we say, let's not judge a book by its cover. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying, oh, look at his shoes, look at her shoes, look at this sweater they have on. Or That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you feel an overwhelming dark energy when you meet them, you know the difference, you guys, between when you meet someone and it's a judging for appearance type of thing, which is very superficial and very uncalled for because um, you'll meet some of the greatest people and sometimes even some of the wealthiest people and you, you're judging a book by its cover, of course, right? But that's not this case with these narcissists. The case with these narcissists is that they'll start talking to you. Um, they'll make small conversation with you and they'll smile at you like, hey, you know, like they just want to talk to you really quick. These narcissists, gang stalkers, and you'll think to yourself, OK, you know, this person is charismatic. They don't seem that bad. But then even during the conversation that you have with them, if you really pay attention, they'll say something that's kind of off or something that's kind of. Um, once they get comfortable with you, you'll start seeing that they have lack of empathy with the things that they talk about. You know, they'll start talking about different experiences they've been through. But instead of learning from those things, it's almost as if they feel like they have everything figured out. You know, we all know life is not a straight line. We don't always have everything figured out. We always have a goal, you know, we can have a goal, but even on our way to that goal, to that dream, we all know that there's going to be ups and downs. But see, when you meet the narcissist, they act like everything is just, you know, and they all do it. They all do it. Um, and, and, there's, and it's not saying that there's no such thing as having confidence but it's about the empathy part to it. You get me? So you can definitely be a successful person. And, and you can tell the difference between someone who is more humble. You know, um, these people are humble because they, they're looking at everything they've been through as, you know, they worked hard for it. And, you know, they can brag about it because they, you know, they worked hard for it. 
But see, the narcissist literally has to step on everyone to get where they have to get to. And even then, they're still stepping. It never stops. It's a game that never stops with narcissists. So when they meet you, it's a game. Narcissists love the game they like to play. They can't be committed to anyone because they enjoy the chase. They enjoy the game. It doesn't, you know, they're not faithful to anyone. They might tell you, hey, we're going to be in an open relationship. Let's, you know, you know, they might meet up with you in the beginning and say, hey, I'm not ready for a relationship. You know, let's just be friends. And then next thing you know, they're committed to someone and want you to, you know, be their rebound or, you know, um, it's always some type of game, some type of chase um, with these narcissists. But what I really need you guys to pay attention to, because this is the most important thing about dealing with narcissists, that I need everyone to understand. You know, we all know different characteristics that narcissists show us. But see, the thing about it is that narcissists love bomb like crazy in the beginning. And this is how they get you. And you know, we can all say, oh, you know, you have to watch out for someone who is love bombing you. Watch out for the love bomb. These narcissists, you guys are getting smart. They know that if they love bomb too much, you might catch on to them too. They're getting smart. The narcissist is that guy in the room who's quiet and lets his friend act a fool. He's the guy who is going to try to make himself look smarter, more sophisticated, more educated, you know, more wiser than anyone else. So, of course, you know, we have to understand that the most important thing about dealing with narcissists is their energy when you first meet them. Not the superficial part of it. I mean, you literally feel it when you barely look at them for the first time and you see them, you see their face, you see their eyes. When you see those eyes, when you, you know, when you look into their eyes, you know, it's like a window to someone's soul. I think that's how the quote goes. I'm not sure, but it's, it's true. You can tell a lot about someone's eyes. Are they looking away? Are they looking at you? Are they... Does it look like they're telling themselves, hey, I have to look this person in the eyes to make myself look like I'm honest? I mean, it starts to become to the point where it's almost like you can read these narcissist thoughts. It's scary. It's like, you know, the movie Think Like a Man or whatever the movie is called. And, you know, you can think you can listen to the opposite sex thoughts. You can literally start listening to these narcissist thoughts from the beginning when you meet them. It's in their eyes. It's in the, everything. The way they look at you, the way they smile, it seems superficial. Their smile seems fake. But then because they're speaking to you about things to make themselves look uh, relatable to you, you get caught up in that. And that's how the love bombing starts slowly. Before you even get into that, you guys... Look at this person. Look at their energy. And then once they start speaking, take a while to make your judgment. You know, once you feel the energy, if it's negative, if it feels dark, if it feels hungry, if it feels desperate, if it feels like it's seeking something. We as human beings shouldn't seek anything when we're complete, but the narcissist is constantly seeking. So it's important for you to know um, these gang stalkers and these people and how they function. And I realized, you know, that's something that I always have. Um, I'm really good at at this point with and. When I see and I hear certain things, they kind of become 
like confirmation to me and they should be confirmation to you guys as well. So I wanted to tell you guys just a quick, um, just quick story about an, a, a recent incident that happened to me. And I wanted you guys to um, just pay attention to the story because I mean, it happened so fast to me and it's short, but it meant so much in so many different ways. These narcissists, gang stalkers, they can be male or female, you guys. So for the women, um, you know, I have a lot of males also on my on my YouTube channel, but I also have a lot of women. So for the women, I need you guys to understand that narcissists aren't just men. They're also women because a lot of narcissist men make narcissist women, right? That's how they're, there's all these narcissist women. They were made by a narcissist man or, or woman or woman. But for the most part, that woman had to eventually that it began from a man, <laughs> basically. But my whole point is that there's both male and female narcissist. It doesn't you know, this disease, this gang stalker disease, it doesn't, it doesn't um, disqualify you be based on your gender, based on your race, based on your age. This can be anyone. And as we know, a lot of narcissist men are very abusive, very controlling. And a lot of times, these women that get caught up in these triangles with these narcissist men, eventually they're so lost distorted over the whole situation that they know the narcissist is a cheater they know that hey he's going to leave me for a couple months he'll be back the other girlfriends they know hey he's going to stay here for a couple months he might break up with me and go somewhere else and meanwhile, not only does he have, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eight supplies, but these men have women who know what they're doing. They, these women believe that the narcissist is telling them the truth. The narcissist doesn't care about anyone, you guys. All these people they mess with, they don't care about anyone. They're just supplies for different things, money, sex, different things, everything. But it, it's it's no attachment there. And to be honest with you, as much as narcissists have sex, sometimes I don't really know if they really enjoy it or, or if they're, they're faking it or maybe they do enjoy it, but... For, for sure, they don't have any type of connection to anyone. They don't make love. You know, um, everything is an attachment, an obsession, control. Everything is about control. And these women believe that some of these men are telling them the truth. Even if they tell them, hey, I have a wife. They believe that the narcissist is only with them besides the wife, right? I'm just giving a quick example. So what happens is that these women are like basically narcissists themselves because someone, you know, they might have always been narcissist or it just got worse and worse. And they become basically like Jezebel spirits and you know, um, do all kinds of things that are very demonic with the narcissist. This can be having, you know, sexual intercourse while, you know, their children are there, you know, say they have children with a different spas, they'll do stuff like have sex in front of their children, you know, do different things that is that is very just wrong, 
You know, that's very disrespectful because they don't care about their family. They don't care about their kids. They don't care. You know, sometimes some of these narcissists even pimp out their own children. You have to think about that. Some, you know, a lot of people don't talk about that, but some narcissists have children just so they can basically pimp them out. So um, it's serious the level of how much they really don't have empathy. So these women that get with them end up doing anything the narcissist says because they feel as if, hey, we're both bad. Let's be bad together. Bonnie and Clyde, right? Not understanding that the narcissist doesn't love anyone. So these women also get in line to go seek naive women, become friends with them, and, you know, they'll start to tell you, hey, let's have a threesome, me and my boyfriend, or, you know, things like that, and this is dangerous, this is how a lot of um, sex trafficking and things like that happen, this is very important, because this is how fast your whole life can freaking change, and, um, You know, I like to be honest about everything, even if it hurts, even if it sounds scary, because I don't live in a in a fairy tale made up world. I live in the real world and this is real life and this is how things happen. So when you feel something bad about someone, male or female, you know, this girl just starts coming up to you, trying to be your friend and talking to you and you're thinking, oh, I don't really have friends like that. She's a girl. She's not going to do anything to me. This girl can be possessed by the narcissist spirit. You cannot trust even the same sex. And I've learned that in many different ways to tell people that because it's serious. This is how human trafficking goes about. These these men don't even, they're so coward they're, they're cowards. They would rather keep using women. And that's the problem in society is that women get used in many different ways. And it's always everyone's rights, but women, but it, for the most part, you know, there are women who are just as evil as these men. When it comes to these predators, it's really serious because, you know, as women, you know, our bodies are different. We're able to bear child, you know, children and things like that. So if you're being friends with a stranger or a a young lady or a woman and You think, you know, because this person is a woman just like you, this person isn't going to do something, you better think twice. So when you get a gut feeling when you meet someone and they're love bombing you or things that they're saying are sounding like they might not have empathy, you have to run from this person. You have to get away. You don't have to interact with these type of people. So, um... You know, I always kind of sometimes get off topic when I get passionate about something I'm talking about. But um, and also I'm not writing notes or anything. This is just me talking. So um, continue to my story that I was telling you guys is that, um, you know, be very careful with routine, routine, you guys. I have a routine every day when it comes to everything, you know, how I start off my morning, um, everything I have, a root- I kind of have like a plan every day on what I'm doing at a specific time. And I'm not thinking that anyone is actually knowledgeable of that, right? Like, I'm not thinking strangers are knowledgeable of what I am doing. So in the morning, you guys, I usually go get my morning coffee. 
and I usually always tell you guys this because that's usually when I make my videos. And um, I'm not really thinking anything of it, but I end up bumping into this young girl. You know, she was way younger than me, but I guess she assumed we were up around the same age. And um, she just started talking to me and she doesn't live too far off from where I live. But I ended up bumping into her at a local store, grocery store. And she basically just started talking to me like small talk. And I'm not thinking anything of it, you know, like anything of it. And she ends up telling me, you know, hey, I know you live down the street, don't you? And when she said that, it kind of was like weird to me. Like, why does this person know I live down the street? And then she said, oh, I always see you go get your coffee. You know, like I always see you coming out from getting your coffee. It was just weird for someone that I do not know that does not live like right next door to me, you know, pay attention to me, to be paying attention to my whereabouts, you know, what I'm doing. It was just kind of off. And she's like, yeah, you know, I seen you a couple of times and things like that. And I was just kind of like, that's weird. Because if you seen me a couple of times, that means that I should have saw you a couple of times, right? If you saw me a couple of times, I should... I should have saw you a couple of times, right? But I've never seen this girl before. So um, I guess this video, you guys, is just to inform you guys that there might always be people watching you that you do not know, male or female. And sometimes they'll talk to you and you have to think about it, just like this young lady um, saw me, what she said a couple of times, and I've never seen her before. Um, you know, she says she, you know, lived nearby and things like that. And, you know, maybe that's why she's seen me, but I've never seen her before. And, you know, the fact that someone was paying attention to me more than I paid attention to them, you know, the fact that they were just trying to have some type of connection to me and had been watching me um kind of got set me off in the wrong way because you just never know if they've been watching your home or you know, you never know if this person knows, you know, some of these narcissists in your life and they're coming after you. So just be very careful, you guys, when you guys meet people, when they talk to you and you don't know them. Just ask yourself these questions because this incident happened to me recently and you know I always get incidents like that that happen and then I end up finding out that this person knows someone that I know and then I'm like thinking to myself like why do all these people know each other and it's almost like they're trying to set me up or something because it's just weird um that's because people are always watching so um Always be careful when you're meeting new people, even if you're meeting them online and you don't know them. They might, you know, they might have been following you from different um, pages online, you guys. They're making fake profiles, fake emails. People are doing a lot of, you know, bogus, weird things online. So be careful with being scammed online and being scammed in real life and i'll talk to you guys on the next one bye